What if the global operating system that powered the world for, what, 40 years? Microsoft Windows? What if it's about to be systematically phased out in one of the world's largest economies? I mean, it's not just an intellectual curiosity. We're looking at a moment where digital dominance is being aggressively, and I mean aggressively, challenged. It is a profound shift. And in this deep dive, we're looking at a whole stack of sources, all detailing Huawei's Harmony OS Next. Our mission is really to extract the key knowledge about why this specific OS is now being used as a full-scale replacement for Windows inside China. And of course, what the immediate global implications are for the rest of us, this is you know, so much bigger than trade disputes. This represents China declaring definitive digital independence. And I think the most important nugget, the one thing you need to take away immediately, especially if you heard about this years ago and just dismissed it, mm -hmm. is that Harmony OS is not Android based. Not anymore, no. Right. Unlike those early transitional versions that, you know, Western analysts kind of laughed at as just an Android skin with a new logo. This system has been surgically cut free. It completely... <laughs> this is a genuinely independent foundation. And that independence is precisely the point. Yeah. It means the development pipeline, the app ecosystem, the core kernel itself. It's all outside the structural influence of Silicon Valley. Before we go further, make sure to hit subscribe and support Geo9. Okay, so to really grasp the intensity here, you have to look at the historical context. Harmony OS wasn't conceived out of convenience or you know market opportunity. It was born out of pure necessity. A survival play. Exactly. It began back in 2019 as a direct, almost existential backup plan. It was forced into existence by these crippling U.S. sanctions, which restricted Huawei's access not just to Google services, but to advanced chips and key software components. So the choice they faced wasn't about growth. It was about survival. It was either build a completely new sovereign digital foundation from scratch right. or, or as this hardware giant, just slowly watch your devices become obsolete. That's it. And this wasn't a weekend project. We're talking about a five-year, multi-billion-dollar development effort. It involved hundreds of thousands of engineers. And yeah, those initial versions, Harmony OS 1.0, 2.0, they did rely on the underlying Android open source project, mm. but that was just a bridge. It was a way to keep their devices functioning in the market while they built the real thing underneath. So that transition from being Android dependent to fully independent, how hard was that leap? Because switching operating systems is one thing, but completely rebuilding the software stack at this scale. I mean, governments have failed at that repeatedly. It was immense. Think of it like swapping out the foundation of a skyscraper while people are still living in the top floors. They had to port millions and millions of lines of code, establish a completely proprietary kernel architecture, a new developer framework. And Harmony OS Next, like the name implies, is the final result. It is broken free from every single U.S. controlled software element. So zero Google services? Zero. And crucially for this conversation, zero reliance on Windows integration for PC compatibility. And what's fascinating here is just the sheer ambition of its application. This isn't just about replacing Android on phones. Our sources show this is the first fully independent OS developed at this massive scale in China, designed to run across an entire spectrum of devices, PCs, tablets, wearables, smart screens, home automation, even industrial controllers and cars. It's an OS for everything. And that holistic scope is the key distinction. It's the whole point. Windows was designed for a single type of device, the disconnected personal computer sitting on a desk. Harmony OS Next is designed for a unified experience from the very start. Okay, let's unpack this. Here's the twist. The biggest mistake Western analysts keep making is assuming Harmony OS Next is trying to become a, you know, a better Windows. <laughs> it's not. It's trying to render the entire Windows paradigm obsolete. Yes. Windows carries decades of legacy architecture. It was designed for a disconnected world. That's why even today, getting your Windows PC and your phone to truly talk to each other is, well, it's clunky. It often requires third-party cloud services or multiple pieces of software to get it right. In contrast, Harmony OS Next is built around what they call distributed architecture. Now, the technical definition is complex, but the simplest way to explain it is this super device concept. Devices stop being individual islands, a phone, a tablet, a laptop, and they start acting as one giant fluid computing system. All the resources are shared dynamically. Imagine all your computing power just pooling together. And this is where the functionality becomes seamlessly integrated in ways. Oh, that is. Well, Windows just can't match it. Not without massive, slow software patches or, like you said, relying on dozens of external apps. 
Can you give us a tangible example? I mean, why should someone care about distributed architecture if they're already used to Google Drive or iCloud? Okay, a great example is sharing a large photo album. On current systems, you upload it to the cloud, you wait for it to sync, and then you download it on your laptop. With the super device ID, you can just drag a file directly from your phone screen to your laptop screen in real time, instantly. No cloud middleman required because the OS sees both devices as one unit sharing resources over a high-speed local connection. Or another one I saw was instantly redirecting your phone's camera to act as your PC's webcam during a video call. Yes, exactly. That's a perfect example. That level of fluidity, it fundamentally changes the user experience. It sounds a lot like Apple's ecosystem approach, but just taken to an extreme degree of integration. That's a fair comparison, but Huawei is doing it on a much more open-ended device spectrum. Yeah. We're not just talking phones and Macs, we're talking about everything. And what's fascinating here, and this part is easy to myth, but it changes everything when we look at performance and long-term security. You mentioned this runs on a microkernel. For someone who isn't a developer, why is that distinction between a microkernel and, say, Windows monolithic kernel? Why is that important? It's the difference between a massive, slow bureaucracy and a tightly specialized, agile team. Hmm. See, Windows runs on a monolithic kernel. That means all the core system services, file management, networking, drivers, they all run in the central, most powerful part of the OS. So if one driver fails, or one service runs poorly. The whole system can crash. The entire operating system can crash. That's decades of stability risk and, frankly, bloat. The famous blue screen of death is the ultimate expression of a monolithic failure. Exactly. Harmony OS, next on the other hand, uses a microkernel. Only the most essential core functions run centrally. Everything else, drivers, file systems, network stacks, runs in isolation as its own specialized service. This makes it dramatically lighter, inherently more secure, because a faulty driver can't destabilize the whole system hmm. and significantly more efficient. And the performance claims are pretty big. They're impressive. Up to 30% faster system performance and 20% lower power consumption, all because resources are managed so granularly. So beyond performance, the strategic move here seems to be about ecosystem control. You said they are rejecting the Android model where any old app can run, Harmony OS Next requires native Harmony apps only. Isn't that a massive barrier to adoption? It is a deliberate barrier, yes. Yeah. But it's the key to their long-term security and performance strategy. By forcing developers to rebuild their apps, not just you know port them over using Huawei's specific ARC compiler and NextG development kits, they ensure full optimization. The apps are built from the ground up to leverage the microkernel and that distributed architecture we talked about. They even integrate AI at the system level. So they're sacrificing short-term app compatibility for long-term performance and total system ownership. It's a bold gamble that, again, it sort of mimics Apple's approach. If you control the software stack and the hardware, you control the user experience and the data flow completely. And crucially, you control the security protocols. When everything is built on your own core architecture, you eliminate external security vulnerabilities. No more legacy code from third parties or external cloud services introducing risks. This level of system control is absolutely paramount when you're targeting sensitive government and financial institutions. If this perspective feels useful, take a second to subscribe to Geo9. It genuinely pushes me to keep bringing more research stories. So what does this aggressive independence actually mean for the big players? For a company like Microsoft. Now, Think about the history of computing. For 40 years, Microsoft's historic advantage was dependency. Governments, hospitals, banks, schools, they needed Windows licensing to function. This shift in China is a direct state-coordinated strike right at that revenue engine. It's catastrophic for Microsoft's strategic presence there. I mean, losing just one ministry or a national bank's entire licensing contract that represents revenue and strategic importance far greater than millions of individual consumer licenses. This isn't about competition in the consumer space anymore. It's about control over critical national infrastructure. And the sheer scale of this adoption is what makes the challenge so terrifying for Microsoft. China's government is backing this with what our sources call unusual intensity under this mandate of IT independence. We're seeing indications that thousands of state institutions across every core sector are preparing to completely phase out their Windows-based systems. And that coordination is being matched by developer momentum. This isn't a reluctant migration. Over 1.2 million Chinese developers are already actively creating native Harmony OS Next apps. And we're talking about every major national platform, WeChat, Meituan, Duyen, the 
the biggest national banking apps, mm. all of them are rebuilding their software from scratch. That massive commitment, it demonstrates a real confidence in the platform's future. But practically, how difficult is that migration? I mean, moving an entire ministry or a major bank from a secure, functional Windows network to a brand new OS, it seems logistically complicated, expensive, and risky. Doesn't that risk slow down the pace? It is absolutely complicated, but the state coordination minimizes that risk. The switch isn't happening gradually or organically. It's strategic and mandated across entire core sectors, energy, finance, telecom, transportation, education. This top-down mandate ensures that the demand exists for the new software stack, which forces developers to prioritize it and ensures interoperability across different state agencies. Windows is being systematically ejected from entire industries that were once considered unassailable. And this leads to the larger full-stack strategy. Because Harmony OS is just one component, Huawei is offering a comprehensive end-to-end -end solution. The operating system, the cloud infrastructure, the Kunping CPUs, the Ascend AI accelerators, and all the security frameworks. So they're building an entire digital world where they control every single structural layer. Precisely. The goal is simple. Create a digital environment where U.S. tech giants, Microsoft, Google, Apple, have zero structural influence. It's a world that they cannot lock, limit, or sanction. And this is where the geopolitical shockwave really comes from. I mean, chips can be restricted, factories can be blacklisted, but the software itself, once it's widely deployed on millions of devices, it becomes effectively unsanctionable. That ability to sanction software is the U.S. government's ultimate leverage over foreign tech infrastructure. But once Harmony OS Next is running natively on millions of government devices, that political pressure, it can't pull it back. Yeah. It is a technological declaration of sovereignty that protects their core digital assets from any external pressure. Here's where it gets really interesting. If we connect this to the bigger picture, the geopolitical fallout extends far beyond Beijing. If China can prove that a major modern economy can operate successfully and efficiently without relying on Windows or Google or Apple, this offers a viable alternative for other developing nations. A lot of developing nations, particularly in Africa, Southeast Asia, and the Middle East, they are actively seeking digital independence. Many of them already rely heavily on Huawei for their 5G networks and data centers. Harmony OS just completes that low-cost, high-integration alternative to the Western model, which is often seen as expensive and, you know, subject to geopolitical whims. And the spread mechanism doesn't even require aggressive marketing in the West. Harmony OS will spread globally through hardware exports. China exports hundreds of millions of devices every year, laptops, smart TVs, industrial controllers, even automobiles. If Harmony OS comes pre-installed on those, it just quietly builds a global market presence. And we're already seeing this. Countries that are working closely with Huawei, the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Indonesia, Brazil, South Africa, they're discussing deeper software integration. They see Harmony OS as a path to decoupling their essential infrastructure from U.S. digital influence, moving toward a full-stack ecosystem that's not controlled by Silicon Valley. The conclusion of this shift is, well, it's dark. The world is entering a fundamentally split tech era. American software and Chinese software are growing into two separate competing universes. And Harmony OS Next, it feels like it has already crossed the point of no return. Yeah, at the end of the day, the significance here really boils down to power. This conflict isn't about the minor conveniences of iOS versus Android. It is about who controls the digital economy. Whoever controls the operating system, controls the data, controls the security, and controls the future economic environment. And for the first time in four decades, that universal chain of dependency is being actively broken by a nation with massive state support and a very clear, focused mission. Windows was once considered untouchable, universal. This deep dive really forces us to consider what core technology that you rely on today, whether it's a specific cloud service, an operating system, or a financial platform. What if it could be completely replaced or rendered irrelevant by a nation state challenge in the next five years? This coordinated software migration is likely the largest in modern history, and its consequences for global technology architecture will extend far, far beyond China's borders. So how do you see it? Let us know what stands out to you. And if you haven't yet, make sure to follow us so you don't miss the next deep dive.